Up through the early 2000s, it was still pretty uncommon to find clothes with stretch. But with brands like Lululemon, the whole rise of athleisure, now we can't imagine having clothes that don't feel comfortable. Suits, however, are late to the game. So today we're gonna to talk about three stretch suits at three radically different price points and figure out which one might be right for you. We're doing this because there's a lot of resources out there on traditional wool suiting. So things like, okay, what's a super number? What's the difference between a super 100s and a super 160s? But there's really nothing out there on performance fabrics. Performance suits are extremely attractive because you can travel without a garment bag, you just throw it in your suitcase, you don't have to go to the dry cleaner because you can machine wash it, but most of all, it's because it's so comfortable. True stretch suits are not wool blends. You're gonna see some suits out there that are 98% wool with 2% stretch. That only gives you a very moderate amount of stretch and isn't really what we're talking about here. True stretch suits are 100% synthetics. So are all performance fabrics and performance suits created equal? Short answer is no. Um, and we're gonna tell you how to spot the differences. We're gonna do that by looking at three different suits. The first is a $98 stretch suit from Target. The second is a $595 custom flex tech suit from Scene. And the third is a $1,020 tech suit from Theory. We're gonna evaluate these suits across four dimensions. The first is stretch and recovery. So how well does it perform? The second is fabric origin, where is it made? The third is dimensional stability. How well does it hold its shape? And finally, it's something a little bit more subjective, which is fit and style. Let's talk about stretch and recovery first. This is really based on fabric composition. In the world of performance fabrics, there's four terms that are most common. The first is polyester, and this is gonna take a little bit of unpacking. Then the next are elastane, spandex, and lycra. What you might not know is that actually elastane, spandex, and lycra are all exactly the same thing. Elastane and spandex are the generic terms and lycra is the branded term. So think about Tylenol. Tylenol is the branded uh, term and then acetaminophen is the active ingredient. So you can buy the generic or you can buy the branded one. So for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna use spandex in lieu of elastane and lycra. So spandex is typically used in compression. It typically is more expensive to produce and it's best used in things where you need to hold the shape. So think athletic tights or yoga leggings. The weaknesses of spandex are that it's heavier, it retains moisture, so if you want your sweat to wick, it's not great for that. So for spandex, you'll almost never see it be more than 30 to 40% on a garment. More often, you'll see it be two to 10%, especially on a more formal garment. And that's because spandex can't be dyed. Now, in some people's minds, polyester is a dirty term. It implies cheap. Uh, but in reality, polyester comes in a bunch of different grades. You think about bread. Bread, you have cheap white bread, but then you also have really high-end artisan bread from a French bakery. So there's a bunch of different grades and it's important to understand how it's made. So when you see polyester as a percentage on a piece of clothing, you need to actually understand how the polyester is manufactured and it's not immediately obvious. So for the Target suit, they have a everyday slim suit. It's at a very affordable price point. It is 63% polyester, 35% rayon, and 2% spandex. So the type of darn technology used in this suit is a single polymer type of polyester. That means that this type of synthetic does not inherently have stretch. It went through a texturized processing step that gave it the stretch. So think about hair that's naturally straight, you use a curling iron and you curl it to give it stretch. But over time, it's gonna become straight again. And so similarly, this type of stretchy material over time is gonna start losing its stretch because it's not natural to the fiber. The rayon, which is a more natural fiber, is incorporated to give it a more polished or finished look because this type of darn technology that was used doesn't look or feel great inherently. The pros are you can get the suit at a very affordable price point and it can make a lot of sense um, if budget is your primary concern. Next up is the Flexex suit by Scene. This is 100% polyester. And this type of polyester is actually different from the single polymer type of yarn used in the Target suit. This is a bi-component yarn. One of the components was something that was patented by DuPont. This is a fabric that takes significantly longer to produce and it's made in a coil type of shape. So you kind of have one yarn going this way and you have another yarn looping this way. And so what it does is it builds a natural stretch. The coil shape creates a natural type of bounce back. 
So um, instead of going through a separate texturized processing step to get the mechanical stretch that you see in cheaper polyesters, this is a kind that over time, no matter how long you wear it, it keeps on recovering to its same shape. It doesn't lose its stretchiness over time, like cheaper synthetics. And it creates a much softer hand feel. And finally, from a fabric composition and stretch and recovery side, let's look at this theory suit. This is 90% uh, polyester and 10% spandex. This is a great option. You could potentially even argue that the spandex uh, composition in terms of the blend may give it a slight edge in terms of stretch. What's interesting is that both the Target and the Theory suit have to be dry clean, whereas the Flex X suit, you can cold wash and dry. So that's a little bit of a difference in terms of the way the, the fabric is made. Depending on the type of polyester or polyester blend, you might not be able to actually throw it in the machine wash. The second dimension is fabric origin. Where did this fabric get milled? In the traditional suiting world, Italy was the number one place where you'd want your fabric to come from. In the performance fabric world, this is actually Japan. And Japan has a long history of incredible innovation in terms of fabric. And for supply chain experts, they would consider Japan the haute couture epicenter of the whole world for performance fabrics. Now, traditionally, spandex is a little bit more expensive than polyester. But what you'll find is that uh, Japanese polyester is much more expensive than, per se, Chinese spandex. For Target, their fabric coming from China using a slightly cheaper type of uh, polyester blend. And the main goal is to get it at a mainstream price point that's incredibly affordable and is a great option. Now for Scene's Custom Flex Tech Suit, this is coming from Japan. It's from one of the most famous uh, performance fabric mills and it's using a much newer and more innovative type of yarn technology that takes a lot more time to develop. And then for Theory's Tech Suit, they are sourcing from Italy. And so Italy has been, in the recent years, grown a lot in its ability to create performance fabrics. Not the specialty area, but still a great sign of quality. The third factor we're looking at is dimensional stability. For yoga leggings and for athletic tights, you want the performance fabric to compress really well. But when you look at a suit, you don't want it to be really skin tight. You actually want it to really hold its shape nicely and not to drape limply on your body. On cheaper polyesters, specifically the single polymer polyesters like you get on the Target suit, it's not going to hold the shape as well. It's because it lacks the structural rigor. Now for the scene, flex tech suit, it has a bi-component yarn. And so that coil shape actually gives it a type of structure to it. And so it also allows the bounce back so that the, you can wear it really hard over time and it's still gonna continue to hold that same type of shape. On the Theory suit, um, it's using a much higher end type of polyester and spandex blend. Now spandex tends to not hold its shape as well, but you can argue that it's gonna be pretty comparable in terms of structural soundness. The final dimension is style and fit. This is obviously very subjective, so take it with a grain of salt, and you might not agree on this. Now for the Target suit, it's labeled as slim, but the general consensus is that it's a little bit more boxy, and the jacket is a little bit longer, so it, that's for you, then it works, but for many people who are looking for a mo more modern suit, this might not be a great option. The Seam Flex Tech suit, uh, is actually custom made to fit. So you take a smart fit quiz, you answer anywhere between uh, 15 or so questions to generate your custom size, and then it comes with a 60 day guarantee so that any remakes and alterations are totally free until you get to the fit that you want. So there is no slim fit or standard fit or straight fit, it's really a fit that is unique to you. On the theory side, theory typically goes with a very European, uh, Italian type of look. It's very beautiful and modern. And so, um, and this is why Theory has many loyal fans and it's a great option if you have a more slender body type, which uh, Theory tends to create its cuts for. The size range is fairly limited. Hopefully this primer was a great resource for you. The most important takeaway here is that the Karen content label is only just the beginning. You actually have to do your research on how the fabrics are made, the type of technologies they're using to make them. If you found the content here to be valuable, please like the video, comment below, let us know what you think, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.